self-defense is the right as well as the responsibility of every American citizen, no matter who he is or what his background or attitudes. Sometimes he can protect himself as an individual, but more often he must do it as a member of a group. Military organization is simply a means to accomplish that end efficiently. The basic purpose of professional authority in the U.S. Navy, therefore, is to enable each man, as part of a combination of men, to defend himself and his country more effectively than he could through his own efforts alone. What then is required of the commissioned officer carrying out the functions of authority in the naval service? Technical knowledge, obviously basic. But because the officer doesn't work with machines alone, he needs something else. The ability to get people to work together toward common objectives. He needs to be a leader. What does leadership make one think of? Immortalized heroes, Jones, Farragut, Decatur, the two Perrys, Maury, Dewey, Preble. These men were all successful commanders. Let's see what kind of men they were. Impulsive, deliberate, religious, forceful, magnetic, scholarly, decisive, humorous, enthusiastic, shy, aggressive. Each was different in his own way. What did they have in common? One thing for sure, they got the job done. And since the job required men, they got men to do the job and they got them to do it better. In getting men to do jobs better, we must recognize two essential requirements. First, the men must be able to do the job. In this, a man is like the machines he uses. The better designed the machine, the better it does its job. The better a man's natural ability, skill, training, and experience the better he can do his job if he wants to. Second then, men must want to do the job. Like machines, they need forces that can drive them to use their abilities to think, to work, to sweat, to get the job done. Forces that drive us all to learn and to do what we must to get what we need. Men, like machines, are driven, but there the similarity ends. While any particular machine is driven by the one kind of power for which it was designed, human beings are driven by a multitude of motivating forces. Baby wants food. Mother wants to feed him. Man wants a job. Boy wants to meet girl. Some people want service, others want to serve. All driven by this human motive power. All seeking satisfaction for their special needs and aspirations. Some successfully, some unsuccessfully. Yeah, it's about time old Jughead gave me a chance. You know, I'm gonna go up for first class. You now I can take these babies apart, put them together again in my sleep. All I want is to get off this tub. I got a kid a year old I ain't even seen yet. I want to go home. These sailors have needs. So has everyone else. Take this wardroom scene. Double sixes! 
Hey, Romeo, it's your play. You still worried about that blonde or are you sweating out that promotion? Both. I want that other half stripe for a wedding present. I've been overworked and underpaid long enough. Well, all I want is to square myself with the old man after following up that gunnery shoot today. Come on, fellas, knock it off. I want to qualify for underway deck watch. I want to get this course in. The I want, in fact, expresses each man's needs. Such are the wants, the needs that power the human machine, that influence human behavior. Let's take a man, any man. It's how any man's driving needs are satisfied that determines whether he is a happily balanced or sadly unbalanced personality. A man's personality is the summation of all he has been, all he now is, and all he ever hopes to be. His total ingredients for living and doing a job. What these ingredients are and how they are integrated, what kind of personality they produce, will all have some bearing on the manner in which the individual can make an adjustment to the ever-changing circumstances and requirements of life, to the environment in which he lives. Environment doesn't mean merely a farm in New England or a carrier at sea. It means all of the circumstances to which the individual must react. Some make no difference. Some are favorable. Some are unfavorable. Take a day, any day. In the Navy, the unfavorable circumstance might be an overheated classroom, a cold, wet night on the forecastle, a fouled-up watch list, an irritating shipmate, complex working or fighting equipment, a sick family, an over-solicitous mother, or even a difficult senior officer. These unfavorable circumstances are stresses. Everybody is constantly seeking a reduction in the tensions caused by the stresses. When a man succeeds in reducing tensions, when he gets what he needs or is satisfied with what he gets, when he can handle the uncomfortable stresses he meets, he is emotionally balanced, adjusted, the way a man's personality is able to adjust to the ever-changing stresses in his life, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, is the real measure of his emotional fitness. If he cannot handle the stresses of his environment, he is emotionally out of balance, maladjusted. All of us, at times, show evidence of maladjustment to some degree in the form of minor failures, depressions, errors of judgment, inefficiency, irritations, and other deviations from ideal behavior. We all swing between adjustment and maladjustment. At any point, short of complete success, we may give up reasonable attempts to adjust and resort to the unreasonable. This might occur as a result of the environmental stresses becoming too tough for the personality, or the personality becoming too weak for the environmental stresses. 
when the battle of adjustment becomes really tough, we are frustrated and naturally try to escape. But since physical flight is, in most cases, impossible, we may seek escape psychologically through various flight reactions, such as daydreams, caulking off, timidity, sickness, alcoholism. In such flight reactions, the personality suffers. Or frustration may result in fight reactions. Then the environment is made to suffer. Such reactions are seen in irritability and in destructive behavior. Sometimes it is possible to have a mixture of both the fight and the flight reactions, such as a pugnacious drunk. And in the Navy, as anywhere else, the fight reaction can also take the form of actual criminal offense. Irresponsible actions of any kind inevitably involve the professional interests not only of the line officer, but also of the medical officer. Because although disciplinary problems are the line officer's responsibility, the medical officer can help prevent bad behavior at its source. Bad behavior is a symptom of unsuccessful attempts to adjust to the naval environment. But you've got to realize that unauthorized absence just can't be taken lightly. The general nature of a charge in this case is desertion. Two-thirds of the members present at the time the vote was taken, concurring, sentences you to be discharged from the naval service with a bad conduct discharge, to forfeit all pay and allowances, and to be confined at hard labor for eight months. A man may lose his balance completely, go way off course, Furthermore, in the Navy, a man whose needs are frustrated can't resign or change his job. He can't gracefully escape. A maladjusted sailor must either stick it out until his enlistment expires, or get court-martialed, or medically surveyed. Fortunately, however, this same exacting environment is a source of strong psychological support both for the officer and for the men under his command. Military discipline itself is a primary support because it enables the individual to fit into an orderly system. Being a member of an organized group, belonging, sharing the responsibilities and privileges of military life, offers a basis for emotional stability to every man. And the junior officer can give his men even further psychological support by recognizing them as individuals, by trying to understand the driving needs and aspirations behind their behavior. He can help them toward a successful adjustment to Navy life. The officer who ignores his men's driving needs and problems of adjustment is ignoring his own self-interest. Unsatisfied needs, unresolved problems of adjustment will backfire in the form of transfer requests, increased sick calls, AWOLs, waste, and inefficient performance of duty. The common denominator in all our successful naval leaders has been they got the job done. If you are going to be a successful naval leader, your men must want to do the job. 
They will if they achieve healthy emotional balance. You can help them achieve this balance by your understanding of the adjustments necessary within the naval environment.